Are you looking for ways to not poke yourself when needle felting? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to share with you eight ways, tips and tricks to help not poke yourself when needle felting. Hi everyone and welcome to today's needle felting video. Eight ways to not poke yourself tips and tricks. My name is Iceland and I'll be your fiber artist host. And on this channel, Snowflake Forest Felting, I share needle felting videos, tutorials, and product reviews. So if you're new and this interests you, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links down in the description below this video or leave a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. And as always, please share my videos where you can. I also want to give a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed since my last video. Your support here means so much to me. Now let's get started with today's video. I have had a subscriber specifically ask for a video on this topic, so thank you so much for your request. I love creating the themes you guys want to see. I have also noticed many of you have expressed in the comments your concerns about poking yourself, and I just want to start off with letting you know that's very valid. It's a sharp needle, and getting hurt is never fun for anyone. But in all honesty, it really does not happen that much in this craft, and there are ways you can do to protect yourself from it. So if fear of getting poked is holding you back, have no more fear. Besides, fear-based decisions usually aren't the best ones anyway. I personally have been felting for ages and I really don't poke myself that much. And I didn't poke myself in the beginning that much either. Once you do poke yourself, you're kind of like, oh, that was dumb. I wasn't watching or paying attention or I wasn't aiming very well. So if you do poke yourself, it's most likely going to be because you weren't focused or you were moving too fast. So first off, the first thing that you can do is just go slow. This way you're going to get an idea of what the needle felting is like, that needle piercing the wool, how that process is going to work. Number two, aim. Aim with your needle into the wool. So having eye-hand coordination is going to be helpful and important when doing a craft like this. So if you know where you want to poke, it's going to be much more successful. So I'll show you a little closer here. Just the end of your needle where it's barbed, that's what you're going to be putting through the wool. So whether you're working with some loose wool, just straight in, aiming where you want that needle to go, and pulling right back out. And you can see it's already starting to felt and firm that wool up there. And when you're further along with your project and finishing it up, same thing. Straight in and straight out. You can use your fingers to guide you. Put your nails on top. Your fingertips aren't exposed. And just felt along. Holding your heart in place. Same thing if you're working along the edge here. You're holding your fingers on each side. Felt straight in and out in between. You're not going to want to go at an angle because that's then when you risk poking yourself. Just like this. And there's nothing wrong with having your fingers this far away on your project. Number four is go straight in and out of the wool. Notice how I'm not going in a bunch of different angles. I'm just going straight up and down, making nice, precise piercing into the wool. And that's the other thing where you're going straight in and out. You have your felting mat here that if the needle does go through, see how much that needle can go through the project? Depending on your project, it's going to go into that mat and not your finger. Number five, felt away and hold your piece as far away from your fingers as possible. You don't need to be all up close felting like that. You can be on one side of the project while your fingers are on the other side of the project, keeping it in place. Don't be afraid to move around to achieve the distance that you need from your project and your fingers and where you're felting. Holding it at the farthest point. So number six, you can use finger protectors. Anywhere from rubbery, kind of plasticky type pieces, or they make some soft leather and firmer leather ones. And some people even just prefer to use a good old thimble. I'll be sure and link these items for you down below and you can go and check them out there. 
I personally have never used any of them. I like to be able to feel my wool and be close to my project, as in my fingers onto the wool. And I have heard a little bit that some people it does make it harder for them to control the wool and what they're trying to do in shape. There could be certain times where finger protectors are actually more helpful. If you're working with a very detailed piece where your fingers are close to the needle, you might want to use them then. But if you're working on a much larger, broader project, then you might have room from where you're holding the piece to where you're felting and then you wouldn't need those as much at that time. Number seven, have band-aids and ointment on hand and ready nearby in case you do poke yourself. You're not going to probably bleed very much but if it does go deep enough it might bleed more and that could end up on your project so a quick band-aid will prevent getting any blood on your project. Really though they don't normally bleed that much because it's such a tiny poke and a tiny needle that it's not just gouging you unless you're really getting crazy and going a little too forcefully. Which do know, you do not have to push the needle that hard into the wool. You can go very delicately and that barbed part of the needle is super short and that's all that needs to be going into the wool anyway for it to be effective. And honestly you guys, I have no scars on these fingers. I can't even show you a spot where I poked myself and it might just be tender for the first 8, 10, 12 hours or so, it usually goes away by then and you don't even need to continue wearing a band-aid. I think there's maybe only been once I've used a band-aid. And I can honestly say when I've poked myself, it has been because I've been distracted. Like when the kids interrupts me or I'm paying attention to what they're doing more than what I'm doing. Or maybe I've got a video on and I look up to watch it and I'm still going and then all of a sudden, whoops, I wasn't watching. So this brings me to number eight only work on a project when you can focus on it and devote time to it because that focus is going to be everything for you and besides when you're shaping and molding stuff having a time blocked away where you can focus is important you're going to get more done and it's going to be more successful there's been times where i just think oh i can do a little bit and then step away and then come back and it, it doesn't work as well for me it might work for some of you but i really like those section times where I'm focused and working on my project. And that's it for today's video. Those are the eight ways you can help try and not poke yourself with needle felting. I hope you learned something new, enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure and give it that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to show your support. And as always, share my videos where you can. And if there's something you'd like to see me felt next, drop it down in the comments below. I might just make it. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next one. Happy felting!